Right, here's a short video I thought I'd make if anybody's interested, well maybe, about the fuel inlet metering valve on a diesel car. Now how this came about, I was watching a video, a very good video the other night there from a YouTuber called Crank. And he was he was testing the inlet metering valve on a BMW as well. And he showed a few test procedures, so I just thought I would uh, see something I picked up a few years ago, how to test these valves, because they're... It's, they're, no, they're, they're easy to miss out or easy to get caught out when it's got an intermittent signal. So here it is. This is what the various called it. It's called various names. I've heard it called DRV, the fuel meter valve, the fuel, fuel inlet meter valve. So here it's here. So it says it's a small cylinder. It's blah, blah, blah. You can see that. So, and it's fitted to the side of the high pressure. And this is on a diesel pump. And it's pu pulse width modulated. And you can see the corrector. I'll show you that later on. It's on the pump, so it's pin 1 and pin 2. Pin 1 is a constant 12 volt supply, and pin 2 is a control wire, so that's a pulse to ground. So it's a ground side switched. And it says it's best a, a test at the component. But I've actually, I've pinned into the ECU, but I suppose like this, it actually would be better at the component, so you can check that you've got a 12 volt constant at the pin. That's check your supply and check that you've, uh, well, the ground. You can check the ground back at the ECU or you're doing it, it doesn't really matter. But if you've got intermittent, you better actually check to see that you have got a constant 12 volt supply. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I'll, sh I'll take you to the scope screen. Here we go. Uh, back here, where was it in? We'll just go home. And I'll go scope and I'll go lab scope. Uh, you can do this on the... The Veris, or you can do it on the, the even the cheap Pico, but I'll just show you this. So, here's key on. Sorry about that beat. So that's a pulsing signal. So you can see that the it gets the initial 12 volt supply, and you can see that it's ground in the valve. So I'll turn the car on, and you can see that the, the actual pulse width. That's the base thing actually. See here is the pulse width. So the pulse width is sorry, it's this bit at the bottom here, how much it's actually controlling the fuel. Sorry, I put my fingers in the way. So I would imagine, hmm, what do you think that is? 30%? So you take it between there and there, so that would be about a 30% signal. So you can sit and look at this uh, scope all day long, and actually I've seen it, you can actually see the dropouts. You get one bit, it just they pulse it to ground, it stays high, or it just constantly stays low. So that's really just to prove circuit integrity. I bug it in there. That proves circuit integrity, the whole thing. Sorry, that was <laughs> that was an Amazon delivery driver. So another way, a good way of testing this thing was if you go in the Veris, you can, I'll try in the Pico later on, go back and go back again and go to the graphing multimeter. And this is the one here, pulse width. So you can see here, is it pulse width? No, I'm not wanting pulse width, I'm back. I'm wanting duty cycle, as I said, first of all. So there you go. Uh, let's let's turn off channel. We, we didn't actually need that. So, you can see there the duty cycle of that valve is about 40%. Yeah, I think we can get other, can we get other things on here. So see, there's a, there's a live bit there, 41%. And if you rev the car, you can see, that's pretty good. You can see it open and shut new. Well, what I'm saying, no opening shut, you can see it getting duty cycle more, so it's opening the valve more for more fuel to go in. So this is a, I've seen this, it was Scanner Danner that showed me this with injectors. Didn't show me personally, showed me on YouTube. But it's a great way for look for dropouts, especially on a, a pulsing valve. So if you see, the Veris does it quite well, if you, if you see a sharp downturn, that is the whole thing dropping out. So that's another another way to prove it. I'm, actually, I actually should take this a run and have a look, see what the, the duty cycle is on the whole thing, but uh, that saves you looking at the scope pattern, trying to figure out where I drop out. This is, the graphing meter on the, the Veris is really quite good for looking at things. The other thing you could test, which is not as useful, uh, is frequency. Now, where's frequency on this thing? I think we need to, that's a bit, we need to change that a bit higher than 50 hertz. We'll go to 250 hertz. So there you go, it's plotting the frequency there. Uh, let me get the reading down the bottom. 
it says 153 hertz. I wouldn't imagine, oh, it does change. It changes a wee bit. Uh, there we go. It comes back down. So what's that going? I just gave it a rave, so it's going up pretty high, actually. But I don't think frequencies is good at picking up dropouts in a valve valve, in a bad valve. It's what duty cycle is. So that's another method. Another method I thought about as well was the... Uh, putting an amps clamp around this valve because I think it's well when I seen in that crank video last night it was pulling about 740 amps or something like that so I'll maybe look at that as well but I'll go and show you where I've been uh, pinned into so I'm pinned into the, the ECU I think that was pin then we'll go back there I don't know here, that's pin 71. You can see that's that, uh, that green wire there. And the actual inlay meeting valve is just... There we go, do you see the wires there? Just down there. Uh, wait, I'll get a torch. There's the inlay meeting valve there. So it's a, let me see, it's a green wire. And let's see, let me focus in on that. It's a green wire and a red wire. So the... I decided just to record this sitting in the car because taking this thing out for a drive it was far too shaky. So that's the key off. So what I'll do is, we're still on graphing multimeter, we're on duty cycle. This is the best uh, for looking for dropouts, so I'll put the key on. And you can see there, with the, just the engine off, key on. We're sitting with a duty cycle right now. You can read it at the bottom better there. 37 37 percent so we'll now start the car you can see that uh, idle still at 37 percent now i'll just give you this when we were out in the road wait, wait, there's a wee blip up there what did that drive up to ooh, hard to read 69 percent that figure there so that was just a, a wee intermittent bit there actually must just open the valve up briefly and shut it again so actually when we're going quite a vigorous test drive the valve went between 37 and 55. Maybe see it jumps up there. So we can't, we couldn't actually get the valve to go over 55% duty cycle. So that must just be how the thing works. I thought maybe we could drive it higher, but so if your valve's going between 55 down to 35, I think you're in a safe zone. But uh, that's what it looked like on the, the duty cycle on the graphing meter on the. The Veris. Now I know you can do exactly the same on even the cheap picoscope, but I need to figure that out. You can look at the waveform on the picoscope, but uh, there is a way that you can track duty cycle and frequency. So hopefully I can figure that and let you see it. But I'll let you see the the, the milliamps that this thing pulls, and we'll just do it on the Veris. Now that's me back on the, the scope meter, the lab scope, on that uh, the, the inlet meeting valve. So I've got two things plotted here. I've just got the, the norm, on the yellow trace is a normal uh, duty cycle uh, voltage pulse width and on the green trace I'm plotting the amperage. So we'll just put the, the car on. Now, according to that video it was about 700 milliamps so we'll just see what this thing pulls. So that's it now on. So you can see the green is saying it's pulling 1.2 amps. That's just sitting with the the thing on, you can see uh, that's one, so it's going between one amp and I don't know, about two amps, or just short of two amps. So the average is 1.2 amps, and you can see that uh, that waveform actually shows when it's pulling the ground, that's when it's pulling greater amperage, so that's when it's opening. So, see the valve just cut off, so I'll just cycle the key, get it back on, start the car. <laughs> That's the car running, I'll give it a little rev, see if the amperage increases much. Went up to 1.6, 1.5, so it has went up a little bit. I'll we'll adjust it up the screen. There we go. So, roughly one and a half amps that this thing pulls. So, there's another way you can test it using an amps clamp. 
So I'm sure there's plenty of other ways of testing this thing, but uh, there's a few ways anyway. Cheers.